there's a good chance that in the short term, it will get a short term bounce back up. And that will be sort of the pivotal moment. Hello everyone. Today, Benjamin Cowan talks about the Bitcoin and Ethereum and their price prediction. If you're as excited about exploring the fascinating world of cryptocurrencies as we are, hit that subscribe button now. Don't miss out on our insightful discussions, market updates, and game-changing insights that could potentially shape your financial future. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you find our content valuable. Your support fuels our passion to keep delivering top-notch videos. And hey, why not spread the knowledge? Share our videos with your crypto-curious friends, family, and fellow enthusiasts. I think there's a common ground that the bears and the bulls can come to in this. And I, I've said that many, many times before. And my view is that it doesn't matter if, if you're long-term bullish on Ether Bitcoin, it could still go down in the short term and still fulfill your dreams in the next, you know, over the next several years, right? So that's, that's what I want to talk about. So again, you know, the, the very first two videos on my channel are about Ethereum, um, I was talking about timing the long-term momentum shifts. I mean, barely anyone even watched these videos because I had just started YouTube. Um, but that is, that is what I, I want to note that that is where I came from being bullish on it in 2019. Okay. And I suggested back then that it would likely trend higher for several years before topping out. Um, but once 2022 arrived, Right. Once 2022 arrived, I had to turn bearish on the theory, the Ether Bitcoin valuation. And the reason, one of the reasons is because we shifted back to tighter monetary policy. And what you'll notice is that the Ether Bitcoin pair topped out here just before we started to get our first rate hikes. Right. So we can go back and forth about the fundamentals all we want to, but the reality is, is that Ether Bitcoin bottomed just after the Fed started cutting rates and it topped just before the Fed started raising rates. Okay, so again, we can go back and forth about the tokenomics all you guys want, um, and I'm, I'm happy to, you know, to respond to that. I, I respond to many of you on, on Twitter about it. But again, the reality is that it, it bottomed out right after the first rate cut, it topped out just before the first rate hike. So in the same way as we, you know, as, as you know, the very first videos on my channel, to be on the lookout for a potential macro bottom on the Ether Bitcoin pair, I would want to first see a rate cut, right? That is what I would want to see. We haven't gotten that yet. So because of that, I still remain short-term bearish on the Ether Bitcoin pair, which again, has been a very controversial view, but despite it being a controversial view, I, I don't think anyone can say it was the wrong view. Since the merge, Ether Bitcoin has been putting in lower highs. Now, again, you might say, well, it's easy in hindsight, right? It's easy in hindsight, but guys, we, we talked about this every step of the way, right? Literally on the day of the merge, we put out a video called Ethereum, the merge. And we noted that this was likely a secondary distribution phase when this was at 0.08, right? And we even said it going into it, it's likely a secondary distribution phase. You might wonder, what do, you, what do I mean by a secondary distribution phase? Where is this coming from? Well, basically the idea is that, you know, Bitcoin had, had sort of two distribution phases in 2021, right? Right here, one, two, three, four, four peaks, a cool off period, and then a secondary distribution phase that consisted of two well-defined peaks. So you had four peaks and then two peaks, and then Bitcoin bled back down, back down to the range lows, right? That's basically what happened. So when the merge happened, I was, you know, we were looking at this and I'm like, well, gosh, it, it looks awfully familiar. It looks like what we saw Bitcoin do, where it, it essentially, you know, has this distribution phase, these four peaks, and then you go into, into the secondary distribution phase where you get these sort of these, this double peak right around the time of the merge. So then ever since then, we have in fact seen lower highs and lower lows, despite 
all the all the you know all the um the, the the deflationary aspect right despite all of that we have in fact seen lower highs and lower lows ever since so where are we today and what are the expectations well i, I will you know I, I will briefly say just sort of give you guys a, a brief synopsis of what i've previously said i think it's at least worthwhile to know where i'm coming from you know what have been my views over the last six months so that you can better you know assess my views my current views right it's sort of like you know like if you if you put out a theory and and it's wrong um then a lot of people aren't going to really care about what you have to say about it in, in you know over the next few months right you were on the wrong side of it it's like you know my my assumption was that the yearly high for bitcoin was in you know at around 35k right i said many times that i i, I thought you know and this was back when the year started when bitcoin was at 16k 20k whatever I said I thought that Bitcoin could go as high as 35k this year. Now that it's gone above 35k, I mean I'm not going to sit here and 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 try to you know move the goalpost and and figure out exactly where it's going to top out. But that was my view, and and we broke 35k, and so you know I'm just going to kind of see what happens with Bitcoin. I, I don't I don't know, I don't know exactly how high it's going to go. But what I will say is that the fundamental process that's going on remains unchanged. And, and what we've seen is that Bitcoin rallies, it breaks all Bitcoin pairs off support levels. And, and then when Bitcoin drops later on, those all, all Bitcoin pairs don't recover. They just stay at the new low, right? We've seen that literally, you know, all year long. And the Bitcoin dominance view was another controversial view. Uh, but now it seems like a lot more people are on board with it. Which maybe, you know, I mean, I, I still think there are some people that are fading it. But, you know, once everyone's fading it, it might be time to time to switch that view. But one thing that I want to mention is that, so this was sort of our, you know, the, the view that I put out, this was five months ago, right? So five months ago, this is when I sort of rallied back up and I said, all right, it's likely going to get rejected. Uh, you can see that it did, right? It got rejected right there. Pretty clear rejection back down. And then, you know, four months ago, similar idea, right? When it was at 0 0.067 likely going to fade back to the downside, come back down to the range lows, get a nice bounce, and then drop. And then same thing, right? Four months ago, down, bounce, drop. Ongoing collapse video, right? Go back down to the range lows, bounce, drop. So that has been my view. And I've been unwavering in that view ever since the merge, right? Unwavering in it. I, I think that the Ether Bitcoin pair is in the process of a downtrend. A good chance that whether Ether Bitcoin breaks down or not, there's a good chance that in the short term, it will get a short term bounce back up. And that will be sort of the pivotal moment that defines what Ethereum's Bitcoin valuation will do probably for the next six to 12 months. What happens over the coming weeks? Okay. So to sort of briefly recap, last cycle, Ether Bitcoin did not bottom until we started getting rate cuts. This cycle, it started, it topped just before the first rate hike. Now, you might say, why did it top out before the first rate hike? Well, the market is forward looking, right? It's forward looking. So then you might say, well, if it's forward looking, why didn't it bottom out before rate cuts? Well, the thing about rate cuts is that oftentimes, you know, it, it, the, the first rate cut is not even necessarily sufficient to, to really help those risk assets. That's why a lot of times when the Fed's cutting rates, the, the, the stock market will continue to sell off until they get to the point, until they get to the point that, the, you know, it, it, it's accommodative enough for the economy to start expanding again. Right. So like in the in the current cycle, right, the Fed the Fed funds rates at five and a half percent. If we get a cut sometime in 2024, let's say they shave off 50 basis points. If that's not if that's not enough, the, the stock market will tell them that and it'll just keep dropping and it'll keep dropping until the Fed cuts enough. But over here, the market was probably satisfied with this cut. I mean, you know, the, the Fed funds rate was at 2.25 percent. It's not like it was it was that high. So I would like to see a rate cut before I would get too optimistic about a, a, a macro bottom on the Ether Bitcoin pair. It doesn't mean you're not going to get sometimes like these short term bottoms. Even even this low over here, while it was significant, it still just led to a lower high at the end of the day, right? I mean, this is 
This is still a lower high. It did not take out the prior high of 0.088. Still a lower high. Even the merge rally did not put Ether Bitcoin at a new high. Right? Isn't that, I mean, think about it. Even that merge rally, all the hype back then in Q3 2022, all of that, it still could not take out the high from late 2021. Okay? So we've seen this move play out so far, right? And essentially what that move is, is, you know, it, it, it breaks to the downside. I said in a lot of the prior videos that once it gets below 0.058 is where it likely accelerates to the downside. Okay, I said it many, many times. 0.058 is the magic number. It was the magic number last cycle, right? Where, where sort of it started to accelerate right here. It, it started to drop. Now, again, I don't know that this is necessarily the best comparison because this is 2018 and we're currently in 2023, but that was what I was looking at, right? I was thinking, all right, well, 0.058 is where it could accelerate. That's not the only reason. The other reason is if you look at, at, at this trend line here, once we were getting close, that was also corresponding to around 0.058. So what I said is that if the Ether Bitcoin pair breaks below 0.058, then the losses of it could start to accelerate to the downside back to the prior range lows, right? Back to these lows over here. But as we drew out, right, in many of these videos, right, in many of these videos, um, we sort of drew out it coming back down to the range lows and then getting a bounce, right? I mean, basically every video we did, we talked about it, right, down and then get a bounce before dropping. That, I think, is what's currently happening right now, right? We're in that bounce off of the range low. And now we have to figure out if it's basically, if, is it the same thing that happened over here where it just rallies back up and then we you know, the bears and the bulls of the Ether Bitcoin pair have to spend the next 12 months arguing about which way it's going to go? Or is this rally going to get rejected? Unlike this one. I think it's more likely that this rally gets rejected. Not only for the fact that we are still in tighter monetary policy than we were previously, but also if you look at the nature of, of this drop, it was very, very quick very quick, right? There is not a whole lot of effort to sustain higher Ether Bitcoin pairs. And so it went straight back up, right? There are not a whole lot of necessarily like resistance levels. Um, it was just a pretty quick drop. And then we, qu we re quickly reclaimed that range. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Benjamin Cowan. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.